morning, friends. We're on part two. Give me peace. Autumn in Segolda. Hanging out of the train, I bid you all goodbye. Goodbye, Summer. My time is up. Axes knock at the Daka as they board it up. Goodbye. The woods have shed their leaves, empty and sad today, as an accordion case that grieves when its music is taken away. People, meaning us, are also empty. As we leave behind, we have no choice. Mothers, walls, womankind. So it has always been and will be. Goodbye, Mother. Standing at the window, transparent as a cocoon, soon you will know how tired you are. Let us sit here a bit. Friends and foes, adieu. Goodbye. The whistle has blown. It is time for you to run out of me and I out of you. Motherland, goodbye now. I shall not whimper nor make a scene, but be a star, a willow. Thank you, life, for having been. In the shooting gallery, where the top score is ten, I tried to reach a century. Thank you for letting me make the mistake, but a triple thank you, that in two. My transparent shoulders, genius, drove like a red male fist that enters a rubber glove. Vaznizinski may one day be graven in cold stone, but meanwhile, may I find haven in your warm cheek as Andre. In the woods, the leaves were already falling when you ran into me, asked me something. Your dog was with you. You tugged at his leash and called him. He tugged the other way. Thank you for that day. I came alive. Thank you for that September, for explaining me to myself. The housekeeper, I remember, woke us at eight, and on weekends her phonographs sang some old underworld song in a hoarse bass. I give thanks for the time, the place. But you are leaving, going, as the train is going, leaving, going in another direction. We are ceasing to belong to each other or this house. What is wrong? Near to me, I say, yet Siberia's away. I know we shall live again as friends or girlfriends or blades of grass. Instead of us, this one or that one will come. Nature abhors a vacuum. The leaves are swept away without trace, but millions more will grow in their place. Thank you, nature, for the laws you gave me. But a woman runs down the track like a red autumn leaf the train's back. Save me. Translated by W. H. Auden. Dead still. Now with your palms on the blades of my shoulders, let us embrace. Let there be only your lips breath on my face. Only behind our backs, the plunge of rollers. Our backs, which like two shells in moonlight shine, are shut behind us now. We lie here huddled, listening brow to brow, like life's twin formula or double sign. In folly's worldwide wind, our shoulders shield from the weather, the calm we now beget together, like a flame beheld, held between hand in hand. Does each cell have a soul within it? If so, fling open all your little doors, and all your cells shall flutter like the linnet in the cages of my pores. Nothing is hidden that shall not be known, yet by no storm of scorn shall we be pried from this embrace and left alone, like muted shells forgetful of the sea. Meanwhile, O load of stress and bother, lie on the shells of our backs in a great heap, but it will press us closer, one to the other. We are asleep. Translated by Richard Wilbur. First Frost. A girl is freezing in a telephone booth, huddled in her flimsy coat, her face stained by tears and smeared with lipstick. She breathes on her thin little fingers, fingers like ice, glass beads in her ears. She has to beat her way back alone down the icy street. First Frost. A beginning of losses, the first frost of telephone phrases. It is the start of winter glittering on her cheek, the first frost of having been hurt. Translated by Stanley Kunitz. Autumn. The flapping of duck's wings, and on the pathways in the parks, the shimmer of the last cobwebs and of the last bicycle spokes. You should listen to what they are hinting. Go knock at the door of the last house for leave-taking, in that proper house a woman lives who does not expect a husband for supper. She will release the bolt for me and nuzzle against my coat. She will laugh as she offers her lips to me and suddenly gone limp. She will understand everything. The autumn call of the fields, the scattering of seed in the wind, the breakup of families. Still young, trembling with cold, she will think about how even the apple tree bears fruit and the old brown cow has a calf and how life ferments in the hollows of oaks, in pastures, in houses, in windswept wind woods ripening with the grain, treading with woodcocks, and she will weep, sick with desire, whispering, what good are they to me, my hands, my breast? What sense does it make to live as I do, lighting the stove, repeating my daily round of work? And I shall embrace her, I who can't make sense of it either, while outside in the first hoarfrost, the field turns aluminum. Across them, black across them, black and gray, my footprints will march to the railway station. Translated by Stanley Kunitz. 
party. All the tipsy crew sat down suddenly. Where are they, those two? Gone. Not there. Were they blown away by the wind? At the height of the fun, leaving behind a pair of empty chairs, two knives lying there. A moment ago they were drinking, they were here. In a twinkling they vanished, banished from view away, those two. Off through the slush they ran, catch them if you can. They have burned their boats to hell with conventions and raincoats. So from the wine glass fades the hum when the finger ceases to strum, so races a river down its bed or a cloud overhead. So youth is bold to flout the old in their apron strings, so in spring young saplings break out. The party is a huge success, but the daring of this pair, the back of each deserted chair, leaves one speechless. Translated by W. H. Auden. You sit pregnant and pale, how you are changed, poor girl. You sit pulling at your skirt as you start to cry and cry. No wonder we are spoiled. Women, abandoned, fall to our lips. Dash out at the crossing when the train chugs off. And stumble along the tracks like you, staring at window streaks. Mail trains, express trains, rattle past to nearby towns or vast Siberia. And from Moscow to Ashgabat, numbed and dumbstruck, women like monoliths stand, showing their bellies to the moon. While the great-bellied earth, trapped in the bleak enormity of space, as it spins to the light, interprets them. Translated by Stanley Kunitz. Bicycles. In the wood, in the dew, bicycles lie. Through birch trunk gaps, the road flashes by. Fender to fender, fallen art they are, pedal to pedal, handlebar to handlebar. Try as you will, no voice can attain these torpid monsters tangled in chain. Vacant and huge, upward they gaze, above green mist of resin and bees. In mint and daisies, rippling deep, forgotten they lie, and sleep, sleep. Translated by William J. Smith. Homeless. We're hobos, hobos traveling light, lucky to borrow a bed for the night, careless about tomorrow. Spiritualists might steal here for their tryst. This hideout has more echoes than a church. It's full of other people's lives. The place rocks with chromos and priests. Come on, let's raid the icebox. Not for us, the song of the gas stove. Let the telephone ring. It's not for us. We're clo closest, aren't we, when we're most away, embraced by ghostly strangers in the dark, whose kisses scald and stay. My dearest, what a sorry tune. We're immigrés on foreign soil, condemned in a cold and heartless town to hide the deepest things we feel. Shame on fat-bellied bureaucrats. And what's the scandal? What's the crime? That we should keep each other warm? The orders tell dirty... Orators tell dirty lies, but whom, I ask, do we to harm? Shopkeepers, why are you disturbed by us? Fear for yourselves, who think love dangerous. Dreary sellers of our buried life, shall we burn up the wallpaper when we wake? Attack the pictures with a knife? Smash every piece of china into bits for love's departing sake? Be careful with that dish, it isn't ours to break. Translated by Stanley Kunitz. Give me peace. Give me quietness and peace. My nerves are badly burnt, I guess. Give me peace. Let the pine tree slowly shift its shadows, which tickles us as it goes, down our backs all the way to our toes. With a kind of cooling mischief, give us peace. All sounds have ceased. Why put in words the iridescence of your eyebrows? You nod in silence. Give us peace. Sound travels much slower than light. Let's give our tongues a rest. In any case, essentials are nameless. Better rely on feeling and color. The skin is also human, dear with sensations peculiar to it. A finger's touch is music to it, like a nightingale's song to the ear. What's with you windbags back at home, still shouting blue murder and fussing? Still raising hell about nothing. Leave us alone. We're deep in something else, immersed in nature's inscrutable ways. From an acrid smell of smoke we surmise that the shepherds are back from the hills. It's dusk. They're cooking their suppers and smoking, each as hushed as his shadow, and like flames of cigarette lighters, the silent tongues of sheepdogs glow. Translated by Max Hayward. Have a good day, friends.